So we're starting on a summer schedule, and so we have a theme through our summer schedule, and I cannot tell you what it is. You have to look on the door for it. It's around weather, and so you'll notice every Sunday that we have some kind of weather scripture. So recently, I read a story about Chippy the Peacock. Chippy the Peacock uh, never saw it coming. One second, he was peacefully perched in his cage. The next, he was sucked in, washed up, and blown over. The problem began when Chippy's owner decided to clean Chippy's cage with a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> she removed the attachment from the end of the hose and stuck it in the cage. The phone rang. She turned to pick it up. She barely said hello when whoosh, Chippy got sucked in. The burn owner gasped, put down the phone, turned off the vacuum cleaner, and opened the bug, bag. And there was Chippy, still alive, but stunned. Since the bird was covered with dust, hair, and all the stuff you find in a dust bag, she grabbed him and raced to the bathroom, turned on the tap, and held Chippy under the running water. <laughs> then realizing that Chippy was soaked and shivering, she did what any compassionate bird owner would do. She reached for the hair dryer and blasted the pet with hot air. Poor Chippy never knew what hit him. A few days after the trauma, a friend who had heard about Chippy's troubles contacted his owner to see how the bird was recovering. Well, she replied, Chippy doesn't sing much anymore. He just sits and stares. Who can blame him? Sucked in, washed up, and blown over. That's enough to steal the song from the stoutest heart. Things happen in our lives that come along unexpectedly, and we end up feeling a bit like Chippy, sucked in, washed up, and blown over. The song stolen from the stoutest of hearts. I'm sure there are a few here this morning who could stand up and tell stories of some aspect of their lives where they feel a bit like the disciples in the boat, afraid, vulnerable, and decidedly that sinking feeling. You know what it's like to feel as though you are in the middle of a storm, tossed this way and that, and you wonder how you're ever going to get to calmer waters. The panic-stricken disciples shouted to Jesus above the roar of the wind and the sound of the waves crashing over the sides of the boat, Teacher, don't you care that we are dying? The crises of life have often been compared to stormy seas. They come upon us whether we like it or not. They terrify us. They knock us around and threaten to destroy all our stability and security. We don't know whether we are going to survive them, and we don't know how long they will last. At least, that's how a storm at sea would be for most of us. For Jesus, for Jesus, it was just a chance to grab a quick nap. As Mark tells the story, the disciples were terrified that the boat was going to break up and everyone would die. But Jesus was asleep, on a cushion no less, adding to the contrast between Jesus' tranquility and the disciples' panic. Apparently, Jesus was oblivious to the pending doom. <clears throat> they wake him and cry, cry, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Of course, Jesus quiets the storm with a word, and then he scolds the disciples. Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? Now, this story is not just 
about the weather and a boat trip. This story is about life. It is a story about faith. It is a story about fear. Wherever you find one of these, you will find all three, and they cannot be separated. Sometimes the sea of life is rough. The wind is strong, the waves are high, the boat is taking on water and sinking. And we all know what that is like. Each of us could tell a storm story. Some of our stories would be, begin with a phone call, a doctor's visit, or news we did not want to hear. Some of them will start with the choices we have made, our mistakes and our sins. Other stories will tell about the difficulty of relationships, hopes and plans that fell apart or the struggle to grow up and find our way. Some stories seem to rise out of nowhere and take us by surprise. Other storms build and brew as we watch. Storms happen. Storms of loss and sorrow, storms of suffering, storms of confusion, of failure, of loneliness, of disappointment and regret, of depression, of uncertainty and second guess guessing, storms of thoughts and voices. Regardless of when or how they arise, storms are about changing conditions. Life is overwhelming and out of control. Things don't go away. Circumstances seem too much for our, us to handle. Order gives way to chaos. We are sinking. The water is deep and the new shore is a, in the distant horizon. The disciples are quick to make the storm about Jesus. Do you not care that we are perishing? All of us have this problem at, at some time. We've echoed these words in the storm of our lives. Do something, fix it, make it better. In the midst of the storm, Jesus seems absent, passive, or uncaring. How can he sleep at a time like this? Sleeping Jesus is not what they or we want. Sleeping Jesus is, however, in the same boat and the same storm as the disciples and the same storm as us. He is surrounded by the same water, blown by the same wind, beaten by the same waves. His response, however, is different. While the disciples fret and worry, he sleeps. The disciples want busyness and activity. Jesus sleeps in peace and stillness. His sleep reveals that the greater storm and the real threat is not the wind, the waves, the water around us, the circumstances in which we find ourselves, but the greater storm is within us. The real storm, the more threatening storm, is always the one that churns and rages within us. That interior storm is the one that blows us off course, beats against our faith, and threatens to drown us. Fear, vulnerability, and powerlessness blows through us. The sense of abandonment, the unknown, judgment and criticism, criticism of ourselves and others are the waves that pound us. Too often anger, isolation, cynicism or denial become our shelter from the storm. Peace be still, Jesus speaks to the wind and the sea. Peace be still. Jesus isn't challenging the weather as much as inviting the disciples to change. He's speaking to the wind and the waves within them, the wind and the waves within us. The disciples 
have been pointing to what is going on outside of them, Jesus now points to what is going on inside of them. Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? Jesus' words are more about us than the circumstances of our lives, the storms that we meet. Storms happen. Faith, more faith, better faith, stronger faith, the right kind of faith, these do not eliminate the storms of our lives. Faith does not change the, the storms, it changes us. Did you catch that? Faith changes us. Faith does not take us around the storm, but through the storm. Faith allows us to see and know that Jesus is there with us. Faith is what allows us to be still, to be peaceful in the midst of the storm. It means we do not have to be terrorized by the storm. The Spirit of God blows through and within us more mightily than the winds of any storm. The power of God is stronger than any wave that beats against us. The love of God is deeper than any water that threatens to drown us. In every storm, Jesus is present and his response is always and will always be the same. Peace, be still. In every storm, there are choices to be made. Will we terrorize the storm or Jesus's peace? Do we put our faith in the power of the storm or in the power of God in Christ? Jesus was not joking when he said that he would always be with us to the very end. This is a sacred promise from Jesus. Our baptism declares God's love for us and his continued presence throughout our life. Our baptism is Jesus' promise to ride with us through the storms, bringing his peace and calm to our lives. He may not always stop the chaos around, but he supports us and gives us strength and gives us peace, the peace and strength that only he can bring. When we are sucked in, washed up and blown over, and the song of our heart is silenced, we are assured that Christ is in our boat, sharing our storms, and he says, to our stormy chaos, quiet, be still. Amen.